Hello and a warm welcome to this presentation about the study of criminology here at Monash University. My name is Anna Eriksson, I am an Associate Professor in Criminology and I'm also the Director for the Bachelor of Criminology. So I'll talk you through what we do uh, and what you can study and hopefully what kind of careers you might choose once you're done. Criminology is the study of crime and social control. It's about how we define it, how we understand its causes and the ways in which we respond uh, to it. These definitions tend to change over space and time in different countries and through different periods in history, uh, perhaps especially relevant now in, in COVID times uh, in Australia. We look at who the criminals are, who are the people who break the law for different types of offences. Uh, ranging from things like fraud to murder to terrorism. We uh, take a closer look at the victims of crime and the different types of, of crime and what can be done to reduce victimization and to support victims. How do we prevent crime from a small scale to a large scale? How do we police it? How um, is, is politics involved in this in particular in relation to law and order, which is a very strong rhetoric in Australia? How do we punish crime? What do, how do we respond to it and what works in relation to that? And all of us who are teaching in this program are also active researchers. We have our own areas of expertise and you will meet all of us throughout your degree here. This is also a very multidisciplinary area of study um, that, that draws on psychology, sociology, uh, information technology, history, politics, law, economics, history and science. So if you want to do double degrees or interested in different things, I'm sure you'll find something that will be interesting for you within this degree. So there are two options for you to study uh, criminology here. We have the Bachelor of Arts where you can major or have a minor in criminology. And we have the Bachelor of Criminology where you will also do a few extra subjects that aren't available within the major. We, uh, for example, in terms of crime prevention, indigenous justice, public policy, and also research and industry uh, links and connections. You're working much closer with industry within the bachelor than you would otherwise. I'm gonna go through, no, we're gonna talk about electives. Um, so we have the core degree, and if you go into the criminology booth uh, here on Open Day, you'll get some more information about that. But we have a whole range of electives that you can choose to do, depending on what your interests are. These range from uh, policing, cybercrime, crime in the media, international crime and justice, uh, gender and crime, drugs and crime, juvenile justice, uh, crimes of the city, sorry, and the city, crimes on the powerful and so on and so forth. So we hopefully you find something that you will find uh, particularly interesting to you and your career choice. So I'm going to go through some of the things that you might study at a criminology degree here at Monash. And we are focusing some of the current challenges uh, that we face around the world in terms of crime and justice, and, and that's what we tend to, to focus on. Uh, prisons and punishment is one of those areas. This slide comes first because this is my area of study, so I'm taking the opportunity to promote that, obviously. Some of the key issues that we're looking at is, is do prisons work at all? Is that an effective way of punishing people? Uh, might it be more effective for some people than for others? What kind of punishment? Long sentences, short sentences, high security, low security, and so on and so forth. Prison conditions. Um, these, these range from looking at the impact of solitary confinement to prison farms when you're working out um, in the field, quite literally. A lot of comparative work uh, and study as well. Um, I'm originally from Sweden, but have worked and studied in the UK and Northern Ireland, hence the accent spans all those places. You uh, will be exposed to that kind of international comparative study uh, as well, um, looking at, for example, Nordic prisons that seen as quite exceptional in the way they approach things compared to the US, where it's the highest prison rates in the world bar uh, Russia. Different populations who are in prison, uh, men is the majority, about 90% of prisoners are men, and we're going to explain why that is. Uh, women uh, is a significant minority who is increasing, and we're going to look at that. Children, it's a big debate in Australia at the moment to raise the age of criminal responsibility from 10 to 14, and you will be exposed to the arguments for and against those things and who it impacts. Elderly prisoners, um, Prisoners with cognitive disabilities, mental health, uh, racial minorities, and overrepresentation, in particular of Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander people in Australia. 
Uh, prison staff is another big section that we'll also be looking at and we have guest people, guest lecturers coming in who work in prisons or who manage prisons here in Victoria who are engaged with our program. Um, we look at the design and architecture of prisons and the impact of people and um, discussions around high-tech prisons. For example, some of the uh, new prisons in, in South Korea are run almost exclusively by technology and robots and have very few people in them, use eye scans and so on and so forth to, to, to move around the prison. So um, we're going to look at some of the impacts of that. Another major area of study uh, increasing for everyone is cybercrime. We have a unit in, that is specifically focused on that. It's also an issue we bring up in other units. Some of the things that you would be looking at here is the, uh, it's a knowledge gap, we say, between criminals and, and enforcement. Uh, for people who are engaged in cybercrime, there's all, quite often a lot of profit to be made. That's a big motivator for committing crime. And they tend to be at the forefront of, of um, development within, within the cyber world. And uh, we presume now with, with artificial intelligence as well. And law enforcement often try to, to catch up. So if you're good at... Um, Cybery thingies, normal area, as we can hear. Uh, there's going to be a job for you at the other side of this. We are looking at things like how do you collect evidence, uh, how do you prosecute, how do you find people, cyber terrorism, cyber bullying, and and technology yet to be invented. Um, we have a double degree with with the Bachelor of Technology with Information Technology, and that's an area that will be super interesting to see some more people going through. Organized crime. Uh, is something that we're all exposed to, um, probably more than we, when you would think, particularly in relation to kind of online frauds, identity theft, and, and, and so on. Um, the online, sorry, the, the organized crime uh, activity, I guess, in the world is also one of the largest economies. The smuggling of drugs and weapons um, sits just below, it's the second largest economy in the world, quite frankly. Organised crime activities also smuggle and trade in people uh, for, for employment or for work most often, but also for the sex industry and animals, often animals that are extinct, which is an issue for Australia. We're also looking at the people who are the work or, or engage work are engaged in organised crime. Some of the challenges around organised crime is that we have a traditional view, which is kind of the Italian mafia type thing. We've also been exposed to that here in Melbourne in the kind of underbelly type things. Um, but the, the modern organised criminal is, is, is changing. It's, it's less tattoos, basically, and a lot more nice suits. Uh, it's moving out from the kind of biker gangs into the big boardrooms. It's always been in both, but we are seeing a shift uh, fueled by the use of technology. Crime and the city, this is also an emerging area. Some of the classical scholarship around this come from Chicago in the 1920s and 1930s, and you will learn about those, those theories and the research that was done at that time. The future challenges are around the mega cities. How do we police and prevent crimes in cities uh, that, that are above 10 million people, for example, and these are emerging uh, all over the world, in particular in, in, in China and other Asian countries and that will be a really important area uh, of study for the future. Terrorism and political violence um, has, has been an area that for quite some time, obviously a big since September 11, um, and this is not going away either. Some of the current challenges is, is, is preventing and understanding and explaining the actual acts of violence and war. Uh, radicalization in different spheres, both in kind of left and right wing terrorism, foreign terrorist terrorism versus homegrown, uh, the kind of lone wolf attacks compared to the more organized group like uh, ISIS. How do we police this? How do we punish this? What drives these people? Cyber terrorism moves into this space as well. Intelligence gathering and prevention, and we've seen that last uh, right lately in, in Australia, where, where that particular department within within the Home Office of Foreign Affairs is getting a lot more funding. Um, this is also an area where you will find a lot of job opportunities in the years uh, to come. Policing and crime prevention. This is kind of the classical criminology, I guess, what what people uh, think about when they hear the word criminology. 
one of our current academics who are teaching this is also a former police officer from, from New Zealand uh, with a PhD from Cambridge, and he gives a really interesting perspective uh, on this. We also work closely with Victoria Police and we have some of our former students who are now in the Federal Police who will come in and give guest talks about their work and so on. Uh, current challenges, standing in the middle of, the, of a of COVID epidemic and, 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 a, um, and a further lockdown, the police role is rapidly changing. And, and what they do and what they police and how they interact with the public is probably more important than ever for the legitimacy of the police, but also for the trust in the state. We look at who polices the police, um, how are they trained, how are they deployed, and so on and so forth. Uh, police have to deal with anything from break and enter to large scale terrorism. Some of them work in Australia, some of them work overseas as well. It's, it's, a, it's a big and expanding uh, field. That's, sorry for paper sound. Okay, that's the key areas that you will be looking at within uh, criminology uh, here at Monash. Um, we have some other things that you might be interested in and assessments is one uh, part of it that we are moving in, we have for quite some time, moved away from the traditional here is your essay and here is your exam. Your assignments are tailored to, well the programme is tailored to teach you the skills you need to be successful working in these various fields and the assessments are then designed to test those particular skills. So things like blogs, ethics application, working in a research environment, how to write a policy brief if you work for government or work with an organisation who wants to influence how governments work. Research proposal, how uh, you will develop crime prevention strategies for real life scenarios, submission to the Victorian Law Reform Commission and so on and so forth. We have an example here of an intelligence brief. You might see this on the slide. I'm not going to read it through, but this is some of the things you will be exposed to here. We also have a, a, a lot of industry involvement and, and it keeps increasing. Um, we, we have within criminology and, and I guess most social science degrees, that there is a core unit that is focused on uh, the kind of theory around things that we do and the research and those questions that drive our study. But obviously we all, including our researchers, want to have real life impact. So to work with industry, but also to produce graduates that are actually employable and have the skills that industry asks for is something we take very seriously. The Bachelor of Criminology have an uh, industry advisory board where the uh, current commissioner for corrections is on, the uh, current um, chief of police for police education and training here in Melbourne. Uh, we have eminent lawyers and also people from the United Nations to advise us on our programme and the skills that we, that we teach. In the Bachelor of Criminology, you will do a unit in your third year called the Professional Project, where you will develop a real research project in response to a real research problem uh, that uh, you will, and you will work with industry partners to develop and then present the research to them. This is also a good opportunity for you to network and, and build connections for the future. We have a range of internships and they also keep increasing. We have a particular uh, unit in the faculty that will run these, uh, but they will range from the federal police, commissions for children and young people. Um, uh, the city of Port Phillip, for example, had a study looking at CCTV and this keeps developing. And if you have something you're particularly interested in, come and talk to us and, and we'll see if we can, if we can help. We also do international study tours, which today feels very far away. Um, Hopefully they will be up and running. Uh, we have a crime and justice uh, tour that has been going to Myanmar for the last couple of years, a comparative one in the US, and a human rights and criminal justice one in our Prato Centre in Italy. Um, if we can't bring you there, we will do everything we can to bring these questions here on campus. And obviously through technology, a lot of these people can appear, but we want you to have the international experience and um, hopefully throughout your degree you will be able to do so. We have finally, uh, almost finally, uh, the Monash uh, Criminology Student Society that was launched uh, last year, it was in a 19. Uh, it's a student-led initiative and, and they do a lot of the fun stuff basically that we academics aren't allowed to do anymore. All criminology students are eligible to join, even though it's run by students in the Bachelor of, of Criminology. But do look out for them uh, online and, uh, and on campus. Finally then, just uh, some of the career options for you. 
And again, this is a, it's, it's an expanding, developing uh, field of study and, and, uh, and um, practice. So this is by no means an exhaustive uh, list. But these are some of the places that our, our graduates have now ended up working in. So things like anti-corruption bodies, bodies sorry, uh, the court system, human rights organizations, Department of Justice obviously hires a lot of our graduates, state and federal police, corrections, uh, policy and advisory roles, attorney general's department, community legal centers, um, local, state and federal government, non-government organizations, both locally and all the way up to United Nations, youth justice and international justice and law enforcement. So your interest will kind of decide where you want to take this uh, degree. That's the end of my talk. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you have any more questions, do pop into the chronology booth and they will be able to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you.